Warning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. And welcome back to another episode of Influencers Radio. Um, yeah, yeah, today's guest, this is why I love when we get guests that are so laser focused on something that's so specific that sometimes we don't think about. But but really today we see it more and more. Uh, and it has to do with the restaurant industry. You know, I've been watching some of these reality shows that are, you know, are based around the restaurants and, and making restaurants more successful and, and helping them turn their business around and, and seeing a lot of things that, that restaurants deal with that you just don't think about, especially with compliance and, and health codes and, and all the little things that you don't really think about that they have to, to deal with. And one of the things I notice is how much influence the public has on the not just the success of a restaurant, but really the life and death of restaurants on on with with reviews and with the internet and social media. How quickly a restaurant can be affected by something going viral, and today we are talking with someone that is you know a background in strategic marketing, PR, advertising. And she uses this to help restaurants, but not in the way that you may be thinking. It's not about helping against bad reviews or helping against people complaining about service or the food. It's very laser focused on helping restaurant come into the compliance of state, even national laws around breastfeeding in public. And you may be thinking that, wow, you know, it's, it's, it's someone that, that works specifically on that. And yes, because it is becoming more and more prevalent. You probably see in the news about situations that pop up. And really what the problem is, is people just don't know what to do in the situation. And sometimes it's handled right on the spot. So we're going to dig right into that today. My guest is Julie Hamilton. Julie Welcome to Influencers Radio. Thank you, Jack. I'm so glad to be here. Well, I am glad you are here too, because it seems like every night I turn on the TV, there's there's you know restaurant uh, uh, reality shows and and seeing how difficult it is to balance that you know running the restaurant business while you know, keeping the customers happy. And it seems like it's even more uh, important in restaurants because, you know, people can go out and and jump on social media and they have a much louder and bigger voice than they ever had, you know, 10 years ago. And this is affecting restaurants uh, specifically around the their policies or really their uh, the fact that they completely neglect or ignore creating policies around breastfeeding in public, right? Yes, that's right. Um, restaurants would do well to have a breastfeeding policy and a blueprint for how to train employees. Um, sometimes clients that I come in contact with feel uncomfortable um, or they think that it would be time consuming or they just don't know, okay, we read the law, but what does that mean? What are our responsibilities? And so I can help um, help them walk through that. And and one thing I want to really make crystal clear here is that, uh, and you probably get this mis you know perception a lot, is that you're not a person that's there uh, that's necessarily uh, fighting or trying to carve out the rights of mothers to be able to breastfeed in public. This is something that's already occurred, right? We're beyond that. They have rights. These are their their laws and and regulations around that. So you're here to help restaurants to make sure that they comply with that. Yes, I am. So I am a champion of mother's rights. And when I get on the phone with a uh, restaurant that's had an incident or someone trying to protect against an incident, um, and I tell my name and my title and the advocacy groups, there's silence on the line. And so then I'm able to go on and say, you know, this is why we need to be working together. So my background is in protecting brands. And then, you know, in college and different times, I've worked in restaurants. 
So I know the importance of um, of manager training, of employee training, uh, leadership, investors being happy. You know, I'm able to come at it from all of those different angles. So while I do champion mom's rights, um, there is a way that restaurants can protect um, and also champion mom's rights. You know, as restaurant owners or managers, we want our families to come in. We want our customers to feel comfortable and welcome. And so there's specific things that we can do to make sure that that happens. And so if we dig into this, since uh, this isn't about it, it, you, you um, trying to, to convince restaurants that, you know, mothers should have a right to do this. The fact is the rights are there. The protection is there. The the laws are there. So yeah. let's dig into that. And it may vary by state, and I'm not sure if it does, and you can talk about that. But uh, just in, in general, what are these uh, the, the rights that have actually been put into place with these uh, state and local and, 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 and national, um, uh, I guess, policies and laws that have been enacted? Uh, what rights uh, does it actually give for mothers to uh, breastfeed in public? Well, the overall right to keep in mind, there are some nuances between states, and um, I can mention those, but the overall is moms can breastfeed anywhere they are allowed to be. So if it's in public, if it's in a restaurant, if it's in a park, anywhere a mom is allowed to be, then she has the right to nurse there. Okay, and, that, so and that's not even debatable, right? That, that's not something that a restaurant has a decision on, do we want to allow this or not allow this? That, that's not even up for right. debate. It is not debatable. It is federal law, and then also most states have that law as well. Okay, so it's similar to when uh, you know laws are passed that hey, there's no more smoking. We don't care if you want to allow smoking or not. There's no more smoking uh, in the restaurants, or that um, even similar to perhaps uh, laws around making sure that that uh, uh, wheelchair access is available. This is something that restaurants must uh, comply with, uh, but it obviously has a little bit different. Um, variables and issues around it than that because it is yes, it does. It, you know, it's not just kind of cut and dry I guess in the mind of a lot of restaurants right right it isn't especially with the absence of employee training um, an employee when faced with a question or a complaint or um, something is going on in their store they may take on you know their own what is comfortable to them and then state that as corporate policy and so we want to make sure we have corporate policy in place that we then train out and but some of the issues that you just mentioned um, you know all of those you're right all of those are laws and they're non-debatable the interesting thing that we talk about with restaurants and breastfeeding in public is um this issue is emotional and complex. Uh, breastfeeding in our culture is very, um, it's, it's hard. We, um, as moms, are discouraged some. We see uh, different mixed messages in media and government agencies. Um, and so there's a lot of emotion behind the issue. And so when an incident occurs, there are several advocacy groups that moms can go to um, and the message that uh, spreads almost immediately via social media. So while it is a law um, and it's not debatable, it's still very emotional and uh, bad press spreads very quickly. Right, and I guess a big problem with this, and, and, and one of the downsides is that even though it is a law and there are very clear policies around this, uh, it's something that, a lot of people aren't aware of certainly you know if you're not in the restaurant industry i had no idea until i met you and started talking about uh, to you about what you do i i didn't know you know what the the laws or the the rights were and you know because we obviously this is in a society where nobody debates whether you know, cigarettes are bad for you to be around. Secondhand smoke. Okay, that makes sense. There's not, they don't allow smoke or there's, uh, you know, that makes sense. You know, we, we should have, you know, wheelchair access for, for people to these public places. But it also, when you're talking about breastfeeding is something that is very much, uh, 
based on society, people, the way they were raised, uh, taboos, um, you know, relating it to things that, you know, rather than nature, it's related to things that are probably more, uh, there's people associated with, uh, oh, this is adult, there's children here, and it shouldn't be viewed uh, that way, and it's something, I guess, that people kind of put their head in the sand that they don't necessarily want to talk about, or do you find that a lot of restaurants just kind of hope that it doesn't happen and they don't is that one of the reasons that they don't have an official policy because you know one of the things that you talked about was the fact that people making decisions yes, on the spot the you know because obviously if someone is uh, breastfeeding so in a restaurant and another customer goes and complains and say you know hey are you going to so allow this is happening a lot um, of the you know, they're that they not just thinking about the party the, right you know, in front of them. They're also thinking about all of the other guests don't really know that any maybe problems. can hear what's Does going that on. Seem to be one of the big problems there. But they, they, they just try to, let's, let's make this go away as quickly as possible. And what's the easiest way to do that? Maybe to yes, say. We do see it. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, make, we do see it. You know, you mentioned um, turning on the radio or turning on TV. You know, we're starting to see. Um, more and more breastfeeding incidents um, with restaurants, with retail, um, with YMCA's. Um, but as we, um, and you also touched on the cultural aspect, um, as advocates, we try to frame it as a public health issue. So we take away the sexualization issue. We take away all of those other things. Um, breastfeeding reduces the risk of disease to moms and babies. For example, breast cancer, um, which I had a direct line of breast cancer, so that's why part of why it's so important to me. So um, it's not just an uncomfortable issue. This is a public health issue. And so as advocates um, encourage moms, as we educate moms um, to to take breastfeeding and their new baby along their life journey. So we don't want them to, what they're doing is they're self-selecting themselves out of their community and staying at home because they are afraid of humiliation or being asked to nurse in the bathroom um, or those kinds of things. And so we want moms to reconnect back with the community. And so as we work to reconnect them and encourage them to nurse in public, then these incidents will only increase. And so my role is to help restaurants and protect them, train them, um, so that they won't have a negative event. Right, and I think that's really um, what I, I think, you know, in my mind makes you an influencer because, uh, it, you know, it's clear in your passion and that you're an advocate for mothers around this. But at the same time, you are truly an advocate for restaurants that just don't know and need some guidance on on how to deal with this. And a lot of times, I guess they make decisions not necessarily, like you said, kind of based on what their customers think, but they don't base those decisions realizing uh, there's a policy uh, that they need to, to comply with. And so in the same way, you're an advocate for helping them to, to become educated and to help educate their employees around what it is that they do, that it's no longer a, a judgment call. It's here's our procedures. Here's our policies. So let's talk about that. When you go into a restaurant, do you kind of remove any judgment call out of it and, and help them implement those policies and procedures on here's exactly what's to be done in this situation? Absolutely. Because of the law, you know, we can cite the laws and we can get state specific. Because of that, we can completely take the judgment calls out of it. And then the manager, you know, it isn't the manager saying, you know, well, I'm uncomfortable with it or this is no big deal to me. The manager does not have to make those decisions. He or she can say, you know, this is our policy. Um, I am happy to, you know, if it's a complaining um, guest, I am happy to move you to a different table or we can talk about some different things. But the law protects that mother. And our policy is, is that we leave her alone. Right. And, and that's really the kind of the 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 the. the 
only solution to um, really stay within those 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 laws and within that and, and, and offer that protection that uh, they have and uh, and they deserve. So let's talk about how. Uh, Restaurant, whether it's restaurant owners or chains or managers, deal with this because it is an uncomfortable situation for a lot of them, and to introduce this uh, to to their employees when you come in there, uh, probably a lot of them have avoided it because they don't want to sit down with their employees and talk about this. Is that something that you do as well, as far as uh, rather not just putting together the policies and the procedures? Do you actually help to train and educate the employees around these policies and procedures? I do. Um, National restaurant brands, um, usually there are certain times in the year when all the district managers are together or even general managers um, of the individual stores. And so I can come in and lead the training. So we, um, I talk about the emotion behind the issue. Um, we talk about it uh, from a public health perspective. Um, we go over the laws. We do role play exercises. Um, you know, something as um, <clears throat> as simple as if a complaining party decides to move to another table, you know, what path do you take them on? Do you walk right past the nursing mother? You don't because likely something's going to be said and then you have a larger issue. So it's just even thinking through some of those kinds of things um, helps tremendously with training of employees. Right. And those are things that that aren't necessarily part of the law or policies. It's just good practice, best practices, I guess, for uh, implementing and and, and staying uh, in compliance here. So let's talk about some of the consequences, because like you said, you know, we, we see it um, more incidences, this in the news where this is, has come up. And the fact that uh, social media does carry these stories and it, it can be really damaging obviously, uh, to restaurants. And I think what a lot of people may see is groups that, you know, when they, they hear about an advocacy group for this, they think that, that this group is coming, well, you need to do this or we're going to spread the word. And what? one of the things that I think that, that you do, which is, uh, I think, beneficial to all parties, is come in there and say, look, let's avoid it ever getting to that. Um, you know, you're not there to say do this or this is going to happen. It's a let's avoid this from happening by just, you know, getting in compliance, things that you need to do anyway that you may have been uh, avoiding. So what have you seen out there as far as how this has affected restaurants when they wait until something happens and they have an employee that perhaps makes the wrong decision based on not understanding? Uh, what are some of the consequences we've seen from that? Well, just from your example there, um, I had a private client recently. It was a kind of a casual steakhouse chain, <clears throat> and they did not have a policy or training. Um, and so a mom was nursing, um, and then she was told that she was not allowed to nurse in the restaurant, that she could go to the bathroom or she could leave. And so the mom... Um, Rightly so, started questioning that policy, um, and this was a manager. And so the manager just was uncomfortable. Someone had made a comment to this particular manager. And so without having a corporate policy, without saying, you know, that mom is protected by law, not having any of that um, to pull from, you know, in, his, in the manager toolkit, um, then she was humiliated. And then she did take to social media. And so within 48 hours, there were over a thousand um, retaliatory comments um, and definitely on the review sites uh, that we talked about earlier, but then also on <clears throat> on the restaurant's um, Facebook pages, on social media, on breastfeeding advocacy group social media. And so, of course, every single comment named the restaurant and called for action. So called for an apology, called for um, um, a, a negative event that's called a nurse-in. And so a nurse-in is where um, moms would, um, breastfeeding moms would go to um, a restaurant or to any store that had asked a mom to leave <clears throat> and breastfeed in public uh, for awareness. And so while um, there is a time or place for something like that, 
that would be way down the line. Um, I seek first to understand, you know, what is the incident? What happened? What are our policies? What were the concerns? You know, how was the guest acting? Um, what exactly did the manager say? And those kinds of things. Um, but a, um, what I've just mentioned, a nursing event, um, from my experience, it, um, <clears throat> it benefits no one. Um, it ends up being a very negative event for the restaurant brand. And um, it also is very negative for the mom involved. Um, she gets all kinds of comments. Um, it can be exhausting. Um, the local advocacy groups, it's very time consuming on both the restaurant staff and the advocacy groups. Um, and so in, in every case that I've been involved with, we've been able to um, make repairs, do education, um, an apology if needed, um, and those kinds of things. And it's never escalated to the nursing event. And the, one of the dangers of having multi-state, multi-location brands um, is that if a nursing goes viral enough um, and the event is planned well, then it would be a national nurse in. So you don't just have one manager or one staff that's dealing with the event. You have multiple locations, um, which, of course, just increases the negative publicity from the media. So we, we do try to keep from that. And I guess this is where your marketing and, and PR background comes into play uh, and able yes. to, to help one, I guess, uh, avoid or or reduce the, the damage from something like this. So uh, let's talk about that. And just like in anything, and, and, you know, you think about a doctor, right? A doctor will always tell you that, you know, prevention is, is much easier than cure. And sure. and so how often does that happen? Uh, do you find that people come to you for a cure because something has already occurred? It happened versus people that come and say, I want to make sure that we are good and in check so we can avoid this. Uh, you know, because obviously this is something that's kind of recent coming to light. And you're really one of the pioneers in, in this uh you know, this area of, of helping people come into compliance. Uh, do you see that there's more people that that are starting to come to you for that prevention? Or do you find that most people come to you after something's happened and said, all right, we need help. How, how can we how can we uh, uh, lessen the, the, the damage to this? Well, what what happens is I get the phone call at 10 o'clock at night out of desperation <laughs> asking for intervention and help. So I immediately become part of that restaurant brand's crisis communications team. So um, I am altering, at that point, I'm um, researching, you know, where it started on social media, trying to get the information and restaurants might be pulling security tapes. Um, we're doing all of these kinds of things, but also I'm also um we're very careful about um, our social media response. We want to make sure that the brand is responding, um, is saying we are investigating, you know, is um, transparent and, um, of course, kind and, um, and very honoring to all guests. So we're doing all of that. We're working through the night. Um, I had a client call me New Year's Eve. And so we spent, <laughs> we spent the next few days um, kind of hunkered down trying to uh, dig out of that. But that's one of the reasons why um, I have started this work um, and I'm uh, releasing articles and ebooks and those kinds of things so that brands can protect themselves so they don't have this panicking um uh, incident, you know, where the damage has been done and we're just trying to mitigate further damage. Um, I, I want to get in with the restaurant so that we protect all involved. Right. And, and pre prevention is obviously is, is, is best for everyone. And I think that's really why I, you know, I consider you a pioneer in this because it's something that seems to uh, be completely uh, ignored that doesn't exist a lot of times uh, prevention in this particular category that most of it has happened because something has occurred and one of the things that's really interesting about this is when these incidents occur 
it's not necessarily that the person that makes the decision is making that decision out of personal beliefs or or that they're they're bad people and have prejudice against certain things they are just in a situation they never thought they would be in and they make it and like you said make a decision based on uh, what's going to keep the most or the loudest customer uh, happy, uh, and so when when you have people come in, how's it been? The reaction, or how's how's your reception been when people uh, have you come in uh, as a prevention mechanism to educate employees when you gather them around and say, "Here's what we're going to talk about today." Well, when they usually they have uh, been aware of some other negative experience. So they have heard where a brand and the reputation was um, damaged because of a breastfeeding incident. So they are aware of that. They definitely don't want to go through that um, with their restaurant and their employees. Um, You know, um, I I think they probably wonder how are we going to have, you know, an hour or a couple of hours of training on this topic. Um, But when we're able to start talking about um, how breastfeeding impacts generational health, how we're championing um, moms and families' relationships with their babies and children. Um, it totally changes. Um, once we start talking about it from a, a public health perspective, um, the guards are let down. You know, now instead of, uh, well, that's a sexualization issue or that's, you know, that's your own personal issue. Now, you know, we're in this together to protect moms from breast cancer or we're in this together to uh, protect our children from diabetes and and obesity. So those things that we're struggling with as a country, we can help. We can help prevent those things um, as we champion mom's rights and breastfeeding. Right. And and, and just uh, for overall, um, you know, how many restaurants are in that situation where they they're they're not necessarily, you know, people may think that, well, we don't like it, but we'll do it because we have to versus, uh, you know, we, we understand we're behind this. We just don't know what what is to be done. Yes, they understand and they, you know, um, are for rights of families and women. But like exactly like you said, they're uncomfortable. They don't know how to get started and they don't really understand um, their responsibilities according to the law. Um, And then they just think, you know, well, how would that affect our social media responses or our PR spokesperson? Um, And so I help walk through all of those things. I've used the term brand several times, and restaurants have their own brand. But in the case of something like this, when they're dealing with, um, you know, a tender relationship of a mother and a baby, um, your brand might soften some, and it would change some temporarily. And so it's thinking through those kinds of things um, that can help protect them. Right. And again, I think that's where your, your background in, in, in marketing and, and PR and advertising come into play because uh, what I think is really uh, tremendous that I want to make sure that we put a spotlight on is it's not just you coming in and, and you know, doing that corporate policy, right? Helping them write those corporate policies, those 200 page documents that people write that nobody reads, right? Uh, you, you also, uh, go into that, that brand aspect because you do things like provide them social media templates that, that they can use around this, this topic, which I think is something that, um, no one really thinks about. But when something does occur, to be able to have a template to go back to to help you know mitigate any of those or, or reduce or even avoid those situations is is remarkable. But also um, you know training managers to, on how to deal with this and I guess how they can help employees as well. Uh, so before we, we wrap it up, talk a little bit about that beyond just writing these policies. Talk about these things like the, the, the social media templates and, and things like that that are above and beyond what most people think about what someone like you would do. Um, I can start off with an example recently. Um, our PR Spokespersons are so very important. They are well trained, no media contacts, um, and are very valuable. 
But in my experience, the responses come across very cold when you're dealing with a breastfeeding incident. So, for example, um, in the case of, um, of one breastfeeding incident, the spokesperson's comment was, um, you know, moms would do well to remember that, you know, our stores welcome breastfeeding mothers. And so I just cringed at that. You know, it still seems like it was the moms that were at fault. Um, and so uh, we can think through, you know, a softer way. You know, we, we definitely want to say that our moms are welcome. You know, all guests are welcome in our stores. Um, but not to come across with the cold and, you know, just the facts, ma'am. Um, we definitely want a softer image there. And so... Um, also, with social media, there are some that um, just as each comment is posted, um, they'll just cut and paste. You know, um, breastfeeding mothers are welcome in our restaurants, and so they'll just cut and paste that answer. And boy, with <laughs> with social media and an emotional issue, you cannot that cannot be your social media game plan. Um, they need to be more individual. It needs to be softer. Um, it needs to be transparent. And so it's um, thinking through some of those changes um, with an issue like this. And I guess, so is that what you do is kind of help based on the restaurant you're dealing with, rather than just having these boilerplate templates, uh, I guess you take into consideration perhaps the culture of the restaurant, maybe the the, the, the culture of their 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 customers and help them kind of voice this in a way that's congruent with with their brand? Absolutely, especially if it's a a restaurant brand that um, kind of, you know, it might have like a neighborhood tagline or, um, you know, everyone's welcome or especially something like that, then we have to be extra careful to make sure, you know, that we are communicating that we're trying to figure out what happened in the meantime, you know, absolutely everyone is welcome in our restaurants. So it does depend on the brand. But even if it's more um, maybe um, not a uh, rest, not a neighborhoody feel or not a um, kind of casual family dining, if that isn't the brand, then we look at what the brand is and then we still usually go softer. Um, so we're not um, we're not negating all of the work that we've done from a branding perspective, but we're keeping um, the mom in the story. We're keeping um, the incident at the forefront and kind of backing down a little bit on the brand. Yeah, I think that that's just remarkable, and and, and you know I can see where you know what you're doing is not just a matter of you know, filling out some policies and, and helping you. You're really helping to change the landscape of not just the restaurant industry, but just the, the mindset and the, the taboos of our culture around this thing, because it's not something that's going to turn around, right? I mean, it's, it's something that I think, uh, and it's not that, you know, people are, you know, b- becoming liberal or, or, you know, looser with, with, with our values or anything else. It's where we're becoming more uh, educated and understanding of what, you know, provides a healthy life, what provides healthy families and things like that. And, uh, you know, I truly think that you are, you know, a pioneer in what you're doing and, and, uh, someone that really is going to affect the, uh, the, the landscape of this for, you know, people now and, and on into the future. So I definitely want to thank you for sharing this with us today. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Well, how can people find out more about Julie Hamilton? And, and I can tell you, I I can just see you on these uh, one of these reality shows one day because something's going to happen, right? And you're going to be the person <laughs> that they're going to call in to say, hey, you know, uh, it, it really is. Uh, I know it's just a matter of time. So uh, how can people find out more about uh, Julie Hamilton and, and uh, get involved and start with the prevention rather than wait and, and hunt you down for the cure yes that's right that would be great um, um, those wanting more information can visit breastfeedingreadyrestaurants.com 
that offers some case studies, but it also provides a direct link uh, to my calendar. And so we can jump on the phone and talk about prevention um, or if something has happened and they need an addition to their crisis communications team, all of that contact information is there. And so, again, that's breastfeedingreadyrestaurants. Dot com. All right. Fantastic. And we will uh, definitely have a uh, link to that on the show post. Uh, Julie, again, thank you so much. And I, uh, I can't wait to the day that I, that, that you, you, you got to let me know the day that you, you're on <laughs> one of the reality shows because uh, I know it's coming. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right, folks. There you have it. Uh, definitely check out if you, someone you know is in the restaurant business, uh, this isn't. This is something that I think there's two types of restaurants, those that have had something occur and those that will have something occur. So Julie is definitely someone I think that uh, uh, you should get to know, breastfeedingreadyrestaurants.com. And until next time on Influencers Radio, remember, you are the only real game changer.